Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Between the Sheets podcast here on, oh God, oh God, where are we now? Jesus, <laughs> United Broadcasting Network. It's so much easier when you're in the studio. It's like, ah, um, I'm your host, Gayanne Bruno, and we have a wonderful show tonight. Um, we have lovely ladies, Jenny McNulty just popped in with her lovely green screen. We have yeah. Margaret Shane, Cheryl Murphy, back again, Vicki Wagner, Cara Noble, and Durga McBroom. Um, we have Christian and Tony working the boards. Um, I just wanted to say you can follow me on Instagram, QTE Brat. We're on the first and third Friday of every month here on the United Broadcasting Network. After the show tonight, I will be doing watch parties all over Facebook. And later, at a later date, um, the show will be up on YouTube, as well as Spotify and Apple Music and all that other stuff. So we're there. Uh, find us. And thank you so much for your support on tuning in every other Friday. Um, let's see. Follow us on Facebook, Between the Sheets Podcast. So I'm just going to go around the room real quick before I introduce our amazing guest tonight. Um, we have a man, a real man, on the show. Yes. Um, oh, yes. And um, I'm excited. It's a coup. Uh, you know who he is. He's amazing. I'm so um, honored that he joined us. And I have Durga, Durga to thank for the connection and having and secured um, him on the show. So let's go around the room real quick. Durga, what you've been up to? Um, I've been recording some stuff that I've been putting off. Uh, I actually started a three day, I'm on day two of a three day juice cleanse. Uh, and, um, my sister and I have signed or signing a deal with Cherry Red Records to, uh, distribute our album, Black Floyd. And yeah. it looks like we may have new management. So I'll talk about that more once it's more secure. Awesome. Thank you. I'm going to go to Mara Shane, our birthday girl. Happy belated birthday, sweetheart. How have you been doing? You moved everything. You're in Marina Del Rey now. You're yes, I am. I'm in a beautiful apartment in Marina Del Rey and um, it's great. I love it. I turned 46. Woohoo! <laughs> <laughs> so uh, only four more years till the big 5-0 and um, I'm loving it. I'm loving my life. Awesome. Thank you. And uh, Cara Noble, besides eating tomato soup, what are you doing? <laughs> tomato soup from England, may I just add? Heinz tomato soup. <laughs> um, I'm, um, what the, oh God. I'm uh, trying to get a mortgage on my house. It's been a year. It's really hard. And I'm now on my fourth go at a mortgage. Nice. Oh, no. It's ridiculous. I've got equity up my ass in this house, but they won't. <laughs> It's a nightmare. So that's been a lovely week. Thank I love the way the English say ass. It's just oh, so, yeah. it's so <laughs> sexy, ass. Um, Vicki <laughs> Wagner, what have you been up to? Hey, Gan, you know me, I'm still harassing everything on Facebook. Uh, Marjorie Taylor Green, you know, that's all up in my world <laughs> right now. Can't get her out of the realm, you know what I'm saying? And so just doing that, still working on my book, still my seven o'clock stories. It's coming along and that's about it for me. Oh, um, by the way, if no one knows who Randy Rainbow is, he's amazing. Well, find, him on Facebook, find him on Facebook and watch his video parodies. They're awesome. Yeah. Um, then we have Jenny McNulty. Uh, hi there. Hello, everyone. Sorry, I'm a little tardy. It was, oh, I don't, Mercury is in retrograde or something. I don't know. Because, oh, my internet has been going wacky today, but I'm here. Oh, yeah. But if I suddenly, like, freeze... <laughs> I, you know, don't call the hospital or anything. It's probably just the internet. But uh, I'm here. Yay. Working on my show. So I haven't been here in a while. Looking forward to, to meeting Michael. I'm so excited. My mom is thrilled. She used to love you on Search for Tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> and lastly, we have Cheryl Murphy. Cheryl, hey. what have you been up to? And do you have any insight from the other world to us? Uh, to yeah, to yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, the Mercury retrograde thing, Jenny, you know, not too far off there. We're absolutely in retrograde right now. So really just hold on and self-care is super important and right now, at least for another week. How's that? And then- Okay, we'll be February 20th. I, I thought they said February 20th, yeah. I don't right. even know what that means, it's in retrograde. You know what it means? Shit's gonna hit the fan and it's normal. So don't, don't, don't lose your, don't lose your uh, head over it. All right. It also means, it also means that uh, technically, uh, like all of our technical appliances might malfunction usually. Right, Cheryl? That's that, true. And That's communication true. too, right? That's right. True. That's, That's why I, was... I have a low battery on my cell phone. Well, does mm -hmm. that, does that, I mean, is that why the vibrator is not working properly? <laughs> 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 oh, Michael. Oh, Michael. Michael. Hey, Michael. <laughs> 
You stop. You need to put that thing down. I'm taking mm-hmm. you. <laughs> you need an intervention. I am single. I do what I can. And, <laughs> and on that note, and on that note, don't get carpal tunnel. I know. You know what? I had trigger thumb. Damn it. I'm going to physical therapy. And they Ooh. think it's because I'm holding my phone the wrong way. Who knew? Um, <laughs> wow. But in any event, it's true. Any event. Um, I am so happy um, to have our guest. It's Michael Norrie. I've been promoting it. He is uh, not only a wonderful actor, he's a philanthropist. He's smart. He's funny. He's all in one. I mean, he's, he's done everything. He's done theater. He's done television. He's done films. And and God knows what else. And we'll find out more about it. Don't forget, people, you can call in. It's 323-524-2599. 323 Two five nine nine. So, with further ado, everyone, let's welcome Michael Nori to Between the Sheets Yay. tonight. Michael, welcome. Yay. Welcome. <laughs> so, Thank Michael, you. you are a Sagittarius, I hear. Yes. Yep. December 9th. Well, happy wow. belated birthday. Uh, a few months late, but nonetheless, we haven't seen you. So, um, you started out in. You lived in New Jersey for a while. Was it Alpine? I grew up, yes, I grew up in Alpine, New Jersey, until I was in my early teens. And then uh, my parents sent me away to a boarding school, an all-boys boarding school in oh, Connecticut. Cool. Yeah, wow. that was great. Did you really great. like it? It's so, it saved me. Really? It saved me. I was, I, I was getting killed in, in public high school ah. in, the, in, the, in the 50s. It was... Uh, a you rebel? Know, it, like, like what? You're getting beat up or what? Oh yeah, I was either getting beat up or beating somebody up. Mostly okay. getting beat up. <laughs> oh, you played both sides. Okay, that was good. You, you balanced <laughs> it out. I only say that. I mean, I grew up in Jersey, but I actually grew up in the hood. I don't know. Alpine, New Jersey, doesn't seem to be that rough. I grew up in like Hoboken and North Bergen. Well, yeah, was a, but we were neighbors. Alpine is very close to to Hoboken. Uh, I went to Tenafly High School. Oh, you know, okay. Englewood. Yep, yep, yeah. yep. But oh, in cool. the 50s, it was a whole different deal. Alpine now is is uh it's fancy schmancy yeah it's kind of yeah it is kind of yeah it is <laughs> back then it was it was all farmland back then oh wow so yeah. when did you when did the theater bug hit you or when when did that happen in your life yeah that happened when i was in boarding school uh doing a production of gilbert and sullivan's <laughs> trial by jury and uh, that's when i discovered that i i love to sing and make people laugh and that was in um, my freshman year of high school, and I think that's when that's when the bug bit. Yeah. And so after that, it. Um, hold on one second. Am I with you? There we go. Lost you for a second. Um, I'm using my cell phone, so Mercury Mercury is retrograding. <laughs> there you go. Give it up. That's true. Um. So yeah, that was the first time, but it, it didn't didn't occur to me until uh, quite a few years later that um, that I was going to pursue it as a profession. Now you went to Emerson College, right? Yes, I went to Emerson. Uh, before that, I went to Rollins in Florida, in Winter Park, Florida. And did you were you studying theater at the time? Yes, yes. Rollins had a great theater department, and Emerson had a Emerson had a really good theater department too. And uh, Henry Winkler was a classmate. I love Henry. He's such a cool guy. Yeah. yeah. So what was your first, so like when did you move out to L.A. or you started your career in New York? I started my career in New York. Um, um, I auditioned for a Broadway show with Julie Harris. It was called 40 Carats, C-A-R-A-T-S. Mm-hmm. Um it was produced by David Merrick. It was uh, directed by Abe Burroughs, and it was stage managed by Abe's son, Jimmy Burroughs. Oh, Jim, oh, and if everyone Uh-oh. doesn't know who Jimmy is, Jimmy <laughs> is the yeah. director. He's amazing. He's like a TV guru. I mean, anything on television, you would pretty much see Jimmy Burroughs' name on it. Yeah, he's the kind of the Aaron Sorkin of comedy. Exactly. <laughs> And yeah, so um, um, that was that was it. That was my beginning. My my acting debut was on Broadway. Were you in, singing and dancing as well? I that was, was with Julie Andrews, right? 
I was I was not singing in that show. That was not a musical. Oh. And uh, when they saw me dance, they begged me not to dance. <laughs> <laughs> but wait, but Michael, but it, come on now. You have an amazing was, voice. You've got a lovely voice. Gorgeous. Well, thank you. Voice. Thank you very oh. much. But I like many, your Italian accent voice the best. <laughs> you like the, the Italian accent? <laughs> That's not Italian. That's New York Italian. But I mean, you're not even Italian. I, for the longest time, because like when I was younger, I thought, you know, anything with an ed that ended in a vowel, you had to be right. Italian. And you're not. You are you are half Irish and half Iraqi. Iraqi. Oh. My father was born in Baghdad. Wow. And my mom was born in Boston and, and uh, her mom is from Dublin. Nice. So Irish and Iraqi is pretty wacky. <laughs> I tell you. Big hot combo. Yeah. It's a crazy so, combo. So yeah. um, after you segued, you did some some Broadway stuff, off Broadway stuff. Was the was like the, the soap opera next? The Search for Tomorrow next? Yes. Yeah. Search for Tomorrow came after came after Broadway. And, now, how did um, you get into that? How did you get into that one? Whoa, into Search for Tomorrow? Yeah. Um, I, I must have auditioned for it. And um, and and then I, I, I was cast in that role of Steve Caslow, I think was the guy's name. Mm -hmm. And uh, Kevin Kevin Klein was uh, was a, a, oh. a, a, mm -hmm. a cast mate. Oh. Uh, that's when I got to know Kevin. We worked together on that. Um, it was it was really interesting. We had some great actors pass through the uh, Pass through the doorway of, of Search for Tomorrow. And I did that for two, I think about two years, two and a half years. Wow. Now, the thing is, like, I, I really have deep respect for people that work in daytime because, first of all, a lot of, ta a lot of actors started in that field, you know, and they right. started, that was like, like a, I don't know, maybe like, you know, because not everybody was going to be on movies first or whatever. So, and I, you know, I, I've worked on Y and R. I mean, I haven't been on it, but I've worked behind the scenes on Y and R, Young and the Restless, and Bold and the Beautiful. And though what the what those actors, what you guys need to sort of memorize in one day, and a in, lot, a lot, and then you have to show yeah. emotion. And it really is a great sort of ground ground zero for actors to sort of learn their craft. Right. Well, back at the time that I was doing it, we had. We had teleprompters. They really? Have, yeah, huh? they've gotten rid of it. But we had wow. tele we had teleprompters, and um, it, 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 you could you could tell uh, back in those days, <laughs> you could see that somebody was not looking at the character that they were talking to. <laughs> for, <laughs> for on SNL. You couldn't That's be that. gazing lovingly into their eyes while you were reading your love lines. Then <laughs> <laughs> it made it kind of hard. It's it's difficult. Difficult. How what do you mean they... you think I stole the baby? <laughs> <laughs> How difficult was that transition for you to go from like, you know, really serious acting in stage and in theater and in college to not that not that daytime isn't serious acting, but it is such rapid fire and it's, you know, with the teleprompter not really acting and reacting. Was that like was that a big learning curve for you or did you just sort of jump right in it, you know, fresh as you were learning things and yeah, I kind of jumped right into it. Um, it it's it's a medium that that is uh, very particular. Uh, um, I, I revisited the medium um, several years ago, maybe about ten years ago. Uh, I I did a, a period with uh, all my children yeah. and uh, rode that train to the end of the line. <laughs> of course, there were no no teleprompters then. Um, but by then, what was I, your story line? What's that? What was the storyline? Oh gosh! The one yeah. I mentioned. You were Cortland, oh, right? Yeah. Caleb, were you Adams? No, you were. Yeah, Caleb. 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 Caleb Cortland, yeah. Caleb, yeah, that's right. It's coming back. Are you going to be on the new one? There's a new one. There, yeah, <laughs> Kelly Ripa <laughs> and Mark uh, and her husband. I can never pronounce his last name. They're going to do. It's. I think it's called. Pine Valley or something, but it's it's going to be the Santos family and McCain is coming back. No, yeah, I'm kidding. Mm -hmm. Wow, <laughs> can't get How rid about, of them. Wow, it's like they have nine lives, like a cat. Exactly. 
Call your agent. Are you yeah. also or not? <laughs> hey, look, I'm going to plug the network I worked for. He was also on Young and the Restless, so just saying. <laughs> <laughs> and Guiding Light, too. Didn't you do Guiding Light? No, I don't think I might have. I don't, I don't remember. <laughs> but then, but then. But then. But then. Let me guess what you're going to say. No, you're not. Nope. <laughs> Broadway. But try, Smarty Pants. Go ahead. Go ahead, okay. Mike. Go ahead. No, I thought you were going to use the, the F word. The F word. Yes. You know, I'm getting to the but F word. Live. The F word. The F word. Flash oh, dance. That. <laughs> what? The F. I'm just, I mean, I'm looking at your credits and they're just phenomenal. I mean, they're phenomenal. I mean, you know, it's like he was like Love and War was something I worked with you on. Shattered Dreams was a movie of the week that we worked together. But, you know, you were on um, the OC for a while. Right. I love that show. Army yeah. Wives. Damages, with, damages with no, it's not CBS. These are just shows I like. Damages, damages with Glenn Close. I said NCIS. Oh, NCIS. Yeah. So you've you've done so much work and on such quality shows, and I know some of these shows they just don't hire like shitty actors. They really go for the cream of the crop, and, and you and your entire career embody that. So I applaud you for doing such amazing work that we all have enjoyed throughout our, our throughout my, my lifetime, that you're just phenomenal. So that brings me to the- Thank effort. you, first of all, thank you very much for those kind words. I really appreciate that. No, you're welcome. I'm telling you, I was really excited when Durga said, you know, he, she, she was gonna put a call into you, so I was stoked. Um, because it's sort of like, I've been in the business a very long time, but I'm in the business because I love actors. Mm -hmm. And there's always a little piece of me, no matter what, that's a little starstruck that I can't believe that I'm in the business that I dreamed I was going to be in and it's come full circle. Didn't know what I was going to do with it. So right. I still am a little starstruck. So thank you for bringing joy to my life. Okay. Mm -hmm. a lot well, of you, you want to hear a starstruck story? I do. Yes. yes. I was doing a show with Patty Lapone on, on Broadway at city center. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, it was Can Can, and um, Paul Newman and Joanne Woodward were in the audience. <gasps> they were uh, they, they were supporters of of the of, of City Center, so I knew they were coming backstage afterwards. And uh, <laughs> I saw Paul coming up the stairs toward the dressing room, and before I knew it, his arms were around me. He was hugging me. Wow. A, a, a chance to register before I had a chance to just, just wow. start wetting myself. <laughs> <laughs> and he knew, he knew the, the effect that he, he has on people. So he got into my space before I had a chance to get all weird. Wow. And, oh, nice. and he gave me a hug and he gave me a compliment. But I'll tell you my favorite Paul Newman story uh, and my story about celebrity and the impact that celebrities can have on people. It's happened to Paul Newman, and this was told to me by Robert Redford. Paul Newman was uh, at his favorite ice cream store in Westport, Connecticut. And he had his ice cream and he was sitting at a table by himself over in a corner. And a mom came into the store by herself and she ordered an ice cream and paid for it and turned around and headed toward the door and spotted Paul Newman, but kept walking and exited the store, came back in moments later, went up to the kid at the counter and said, excuse me, um, I was just here. Yes, ma'am, I know you were just here. I, uh, I forgot to get my ice cream. <laughs> and no, ma'am, I gave you your ice cream. Uh, <laughs> I, but I, I, you see that my, my, all I have is my, my handbag. I don't have an ice cream. So I, you must not have given me my ice cream. I said, ma'am, I know for sure I gave you your ice cream. She put in her handbag? Paul Newman said, ma'am, look in your handbag. Oh, oh my God. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. oh, how adorable. Oh, my God. Goodness. That's awesome. Hey, everybody, you're watching Between the Sheets here on United Broadcasting Network. We're here with our guest, Michael Norrie from, yes, the F word, Flashdance, but more Flash recently, 
More recently, Yellowstone. If you want to call in, it's 323-524-2599. 323-524-2599. So now we're going to get to the F word, Michael, because I think everyone, I mean, Durga keeps talking about it. She was in it. You know, um, for me, that was like one of the best movies of my coming of age in a way. Um, and, you know, and, and Jennifer Beals was beautiful. Oh, I mean, still is. Still is. Yeah, still is. Still I've worked is. for numerous all- times. And, and that woman does not age. She does not age. Um, <laughs> but how did you get that role? I mean, obviously, did you audition? Did they call you? I mean, how did you get that role? Yes, I did audition for it. Yeah. Um, I had, um, I was up for another movie um, at uh, 20th Century Fox that was going to be directed by a wonderful director named Sam Peckinpah. Oh my. It was going to be a Western, and uh, Sam Peckinpah was one of my favorite directors, and I was very honored to have been hired by him or been offered offered uh, a part in, in his movie. Uh, my agent suggested that I go and meet and audition for this movie called Flashdance, and I thought, what a, what an odd, strange <laughs> title for a, for a movie. I read it, and I really liked it better than I liked the Peck and Paw movie. Wow. Uh, it was a, a sweet story, and um, and I I, I pre- <laughs> preferred it. So I I, I auditioned for it. Um, the story was that they tried to find Jennifer so that they could pair us up together and see if we were a match, if we paired well. <laughs> they really? couldn't, they, yeah, they couldn't find her. Um, and then my agent, we were, we were sitting in the catbird seat because we had, we had the uh, kind of unique and unusual, uh, all too seldom opportunity of, of having to play one against the other. Yeah. And, uh, so we, 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 we had to tell f- the flash dance people, make a move or, you know, should or get off the pot. <laughs> and uh, so they made the offer and that's how I got to be in, in flash dance. Sweet. Now the interesting part is that when it first came out, it was, it was lukewarm. It, like, wasn't it lu- like for the, the, yes. the industry, it was lukewarm reviews, right, Michael? And then the all reviews, of a sudden, it like I, I, I think that. I think that's being very kind. I, I think the reviews, were, <laughs> they were terrible. It was pretty bad reviews, yeah. I was trying to be politically correct. <laughs> no, we're, we're, no, we're way past that. The, the reviews were terrible. It was, it was, it was a critical bomb. Um, and uh, meanwhile, uh, people were going to see it again and again. And right. it was just make, making a ton of money for, for everybody, everybody involved. Except the stars of the show. Of course. <laughs> Always. Now, what was like if, what was like your favorite moment on the set? Do you have any fun stories or any like memorable things that happened? Well, I, I will tell you, not just because she's here with us tonight, but one of <laughs> one of the uh, great blessings about being in that show is meeting my friend Durga. Aww. And Aww. Uh, um, she and, 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 and Kyle Hefner also has turned into an enduring friendship. Um, I, I, I think that, um, um, I, I, I think that, that there was, there was a, 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 a moment in the movie that was not scripted. And oh. it's when uh, I go to see Alex and uh, we've been in the rain and I, I come in from the rain and, 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 uh, um, she goes to light a cigarette and I knock the cigarette out of her mouth and she slaps me. And I said, you don't get it. You give up your dream, you die. And that was, that just happened in the spur of the moment. Oh, wow. Hmm. So, um. Wait, was that line too? I believe that line was, yeah, I don't think that wow. line was, I don't think that line was in the script. That's and, one of the uh, most powerful lines in the whole movie. Durga, do you remember if that line was in the script or not? We had so many iterations of the script. I don't even know, <laughs> to be honest. Yeah. <clears throat> well, we won't I, let facts. We won't let facts get in the way of a good story. <laughs> no, 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 facts. That's please. what the, the movie. Facts don't matter. 
she slaps you like three times, and the third time she hit the the window blind, and it went flying up. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> great yeah. Scene. That was a great scene. Yeah. So some, did, you ever, did you ever get to work with uh, Sam Peckinpah again? I never did. Unfortunately, he died. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. So you guys do um, flash, flash dance reunions every once in a while, or was it just once? Or We've had a couple. Uh, Durga, we've had a, a, a couple of uh, reunions. I, I did, we did the 30-year anniversary, which was... Um, they they put it it was the first time i'd seen it on the big screen since it was out in 83 wow. uh and they had that at the arrow uh the theater in santa monica and that was really great yeah. and um and uh i hadn't seen michael for a while we talked uh, you know occasionally but um we reconnected there um and then shortly thereafter my husband died and i got to tell you ladies this man really really was there for me oh. every like every day for a while i'd see in my inbox just a flower or a great poem or something uplifting and just the love this man showed me really helped a lot so if you're wondering is he good looking and a nice man <laughs> yes <he's fun. laughs> more importantly michael are you married <laughs> <laughs> You're, oh, no. you're single. You're single oh, right you. now. Wow. I am single. Me, why are all the lesbians asking him if he's married? <laughs> <laughs> Try to hook you up, Mara. Come on. Sorry, yeah, Mara, sorry. I'm honest with you. To be a lesbian now isn't all it's cracked up to be. So, you know, you may be going on the other side of the fence. Who knows? I'm telling you, he's a good looking <laughs> man. Michael's very good looking. I agree now, Mara. And if we're going to be like um, lesbian shamed because we, sit, we know handsomeness, screw y'all. Yeah, you are. I, I said nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Michael, do you like what is it? I mean, you probably don't even have to audition anymore, but but oh, what yes, is I the, do. you do? Would do, do you uh, like how is this whole like shooting them yourselves in your home, or do they like hook you up better? This for I don't know about you guys, but we get these auditions now and you have to shoot it yourself and send it into them, and it's just oh, yeah. a weird a weird way to do it now are you having that same experience or do they like send you guys different setups and things or what's no that it's the same it's the same for me and i have to tell you it's a big adjustment for me yeah um and my agents have told me that you've got to really commit to this in the same way wow. you have to commit to this process in the same way that you would as if you were going in to meet in mm -hmm. person so what and, do you do? Do you hook up your your cell phone to a tripod or something, or how? What's your way that you do it? I've been well so far. I've had I've had a, f a friend come over and and hold the camera for me. Right. Oh, that's good. And yeah, run the lines with me until I know the scene, and uh, and 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 do it that way. Uh, um, I, I understand that it can be done much more elaborately and professionally. It's you know. For me, it's it's really about putting out the ego fires. I, I mm -hmm. I've got this voice in my head that is going, "Are you really, really? Do I really have to do this? I really? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Are you are you kidding me? I've got to, I've got to be doing this. I've got I've got I don't know how many reels of work. Yeah, fifty yeah. years of of work and long time. So that's 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 a, that's a challenge for me, and I have to. Um, it's a real exercise, a real discipline in humility. I have to say, look, if you want this job, if you want this gig, this is the game now. This is this this is this is the way it is. This is the reality. If, See, I if, never if, understood why someone with all your credits and and why you why you have to still audition for things. I just don't get it. I'm going to guess that something to do with a lot of new younger directors coming in. I was going to say you know, that. They, they want to just pick. They just want to be the one that gets it all right, and and that's, I guess that's fair enough. Yeah, right? I I I think that's part of it, and I think maybe that the young up and coming ones um, have not that they're not familiar with our work. Right, right. right. It's it's I it's their way of creating a level playing field. Mm -hmm. uh, look, you've got the 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 cherry the cherry picking goes on at the top at the topmost level of the the people who do not have to audition. They just get the offer, and then you've got the uh, 
the folks at, at, at my level where uh, I am sometimes asked to audition and sometimes I get a straight offer. Nice. Um, but to tell you the truth, it, it is a real challenge for me. It's a challenge to my ego. I have to, I have to get past that. I have to surmount that battle in order to really do a good audition, a self-taping audition. I, let me I, let me put it to you this way too. I mean, Ma Michael, did you ever model? No. You should have. You, you know, you've got the height and the look for it. But uh, you know, as someone who used to model, you can look at my book all you want to, but sometimes you need to see the person in the clothes to really see. I mean, if because some people don't have an imagination, especially it's really frustrating in in the creative field. Sometimes the artist is working for a production team or a director or something who knows a fraction of what you do. And basically your job is to make them look good. I've worked for directors that, ha I mean, when I worked with Malcolm McDowell in Africa, we had a fantastic cast. It was Malcolm McDowell, Lois Childs, who was a Bond girl, um, Philippe Leotard, who was like the Jack Nicholson of France and the director it was like basically handing all of the pieces of a masterpiece to a chimpanzee. <laughs> I don't know what the fuck he was doing? And we used right. to talk about it. We were like, can you believe the directorial choices he's making? And he's got this amazing talent pool at his disposal. Yeah. But you shut up and you do your job and you try right. to make them look good. And sometimes in the in the process of auditioning for things they don't have the imagination that you might have, especially after having a career for 40 or 50 years. You have right. the ability to just effortlessly put yourself into a situation or imagine a situation, and they don't necessarily have that. So you got to show them. Look, in a yeah. business that's theory, it's a business. We're in a creative, well, most of us are in a creative right. business, and the people calling the shots are the non creatives. That yep. has always fascinated me. It's like, okay, all right. But if you let the creatives do it, the projects would be 17 years long and we'd get three <laughs> movies a year put out. <laughs> so maybe Michael, also, Michael, with you doing those audition tapes, maybe you're giving them ideas. Maybe you're helping build their imagination, you know, to see, you know, you're helping to expand their mind. So in some way, I don't like know. I don't know yeah. that I'm making feel any better or not. <laughs> <laughs> True. I don't know if it's making you feel better, but I mean, definitely... when you guys get a script, you know, it's like it's sort of a it's sort of like a, a breakdown, you know, white male, whatever, blah, blah, blah. Right. Mm -hmm. And there's not and there really isn't anything except words on a page. So they really rely on the actor the that actor they to do make to, to make it come to life. And if that actor brings their experience and their emotion and their passion, and sometimes it's it's different than what is written on the page, but there's so much more depth depending on the, who the cat, who the actor is or actress. Right, right. I, I mean, have a question. question. Okay. Did you like? Did you prefer to work in television and film, or did you prefer to work like on Broadway with Julie Andrews and the Victor Victoria type of thing? Like, what's your preference? Yeah, stage. Really? Uh, is it the direct is, feedback from the audience or what is it? Yeah, especially in musicals and singing because I love to sing and uh, being being on stage really lights me up like oh. nothing else. Uh, I, I think because it's it's scary because it's yeah. live. That's scary. Because yeah. you can forget you can forget your lines, which I have countless times. <laughs> do you just and, sing uh, through it like different words? You just make up a few words or what do you do? <laughs> <laughs> well, you vamp, baby, you vamp. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> little scatting. <laughs> yeah, you got a little, little, you got a little backup something or other that you that you, you that you pull up. Um, I, I remember one time in, in Victor Victoria, uh, I was doing a scene with uh, with Julie Andrews and Tony Roberts, and uh, and. Uh, we were in, uh, in the scene and somebody somebody went up and forgot a line and uh i was convinced that it was one of the two of them and uh <laughs> we, and we we got off we got off stage and i i said very sarcastically to both of them whoops <laughs> 
<laughs> and, and, and Julie said, whoops, indeed, darling. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and, and told me my line and I said oh my god it was my line I was I was so I was so into my cat my arrogant character <laughs> did you play the king in that one right yes yeah yeah so you're like don't talk down to me you're supposed to be my subject mm -hmm. exactly the king doesn't forget lions <laughs> that's correct <laughs> so Michael, and even, off you know, with your head so everybody, if you're listening to Between the Sheets here on um, United Broadcasting Network, 323-524-2599. Don't be shy. Don't be scared. Call in. 323-524-2599. Go ahead, Cara. I was going to say, like, when you audition in that way, I, as I assume you have this last year, um, it means you've never, you don't actually meet them face to face till you've got the part and you walk in the first day of shoot. Is that how it is? Or do you still yes. have it true or what? Yes. Well, generally, Cara, what, what, what happens is that there is a process. I think if, if you, you, you self-tape and then uh, you're hired for the job and then you'll have a meeting with the director and the producers, you don't, you don't just start shooting. Okay. You do yeah, get you got involved callbacks. Yeah. 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 So, yeah. so, Michael, during COVID, you've worked, correct? Have yes. You, have you, you've gone to set, you've been on planes. How how is the set different? I mean, from pre-COVID. Yeah, the difference is that um, using uh, this wonderful show Yellowstone with Kevin Costner, which we have been shooting for the last year, uh, requires being tested prior to getting on the plane mm. to fly to Montana. Uh, being tested once you land. Really. On, lo on location going into a four-day quarantine wow and then getting tested again on the on the day that you show up to go for for uh, for for work wow and then you are tested covid tested literally every other day thorough Good. that show thorough. looks great to be on in montana out there i mean it looks gorgeous wow. gorgeous now my well, what they what they did they, they had to adjust they had to make adjustments in the shooting they did a lot of exterior shots. Um, they really cut way back on the interior shots so that we could be outside and be spatially distancing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's interesting. That smart. Wow. A friend of mine. And, sorry. Very strict. I'm sorry to in interrupt. But just, mm -hmm. um, but very, very strict about wearing masks up until the moment that you're you're saying your lines. Mm -hmm. Because I mean, I work in production and I get tested three, four times a week because I'm on different sets. Right. And it's it's really interesting. And then there's the red zone, the blue zone, the yellow zone, and everyone's in zones, and you can't can't cross contaminate. It's it really right. is like interesting. It, it's just it's like, and then you know, and when I produce my photo shoots, that's my own little production, and I'm going through that right now. And I've got to have my red zones, and I've got to make sure plexi is up between this, this, and that, and right. speak this. It's just crazy, but it keeps us working. So I say, I'll do whatever I have to do to keep us working. Right. Exactly. Exactly. I, I'm teaching an acting class um, live um, on Sundays in Santa Monica. Mm. And we have to have, it's required that there's this plexiglass between the students who are performing and the audience. Really? Wow. wow. Now, every, everybody is spaced, spaced appropriately apart. We're observing protocol, taking temperatures as we come in and so on. But this, this very, very distracting piece of plastic between the performers and the <laughs> audience. Oh no. And that's so I had, but I had this, I had this idea in class on Sunday afternoon. I said, look, um, I had this, this idea about use everything. It's important that we use everything um, as, as actors, because at the moment we deny the existence of something that is in our real, real time, it really messes with our messes with our sense of truth, and it makes it hard. It just puts us in our head. So I said, "Look, we've got this. We have to deal with this piece of plastic that's between us. Let's use it. Let's imagine that whatever. Imagine that you're in prison and you're getting a visit from some from the person you're talking to. That you're doing a monologue." touch touch the touch the plastic 
make it make it a real part of your reality instead of trying to pretend that it's not there that's a good idea mm -hmm. and it was amazing what happened it it really enlivened the uh the students that's amazing and and, and it helped to get rid of that piece of shit plastic that was so yeah. annoying you well, know? and it is a barrier. I mean, it is a barrier. I mean, we all, you know, in acting and theater, you know, there is that fourth wall, but it's fake. You know, it's right. that real wall there is just, you know, it really stops the creative process. It really can, it it can impede the, impede and inhibit the, the creative process. And absolutely it can. That's why, that's why I like the idea of incorporating it in some, in some way. And that is why you are an acting teacher, because you, mm -hmm. you, you've done this. It, it makes sense to you. You think out of the box and you think for your students how to improve, you know, their craft. So that I, I applaud you for even thinking about that and, and, and having it work. So that's really smart. Really smart. Well, thanks. Thank you. Yeah, it worked. Has so, the audience ever said anything about it at all? I'm curious. Has the audience what? Has the audience had said anything about it or they're just accepting that this is our reality now that we have to have a plexiglass wall in between us and our performers now? No, we've, they've, the, are you talking about in, in my class? Yeah. In my class, we just accept it as part of the reality. And then what about the people who are watching it? There are people that are watching. It's a it's class. A, it's just an no, it's class. Oh, so there's no audience. I thought you said that there was an audience. No, 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 no. It's just a class. Okay. Yeah. So, Michael, you are now on a Paramount show. Um, it's called um, Yellowstone. Um, you're part Viacom bought CBS. CBS Viacom owns Paramount, so we're all in the family. How did you get um, Yellowstone? How did how did that how did that come about? I was given a piece of material to audition for um, my favorite casting director, John Papsidaris. And I auditioned for it, and I got called back, and I was offered the part. Oh, wonderful. Great. How now, do you like playing that character? Um, I'm the only guy who's not wearing cowboy boots and riding a horse. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you play, Is it good or bad, though? Are you having, like, desire for that, or what? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I have, yeah, I have horse envy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> cowboy envy. I have cowboy envy. I want to be one of those guys who's... Got all those great, well, great, great lines. I have to say, um, working with Kelly Riley is uh, is 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 no burden to bear. She is just an absolute joy to work with. Aww. Most of my scenes are with Kelly. You probably you know of Kelly because she's a fellow Brit, right? And well, you uh, play banker Bob, banker Bob, banker Bob. Yeah, Bob Schwartz. <laughs> Bob Schwartz, yeah. Bob Schwartz. So, how much of what you what they sort of described the character to be that you changed to adapt? Like, what was your creative input on making who Banker Bob is now? I think I just say the lines. It's so wonderfully written, <laughs> by, really, by Taylor Sheridan. Oh, um, nice. there, there's very little room for improvement, and. Uh, um, there's a there's a wonderful story about George S. Kaufman. This is going back to the 50s, uh, and he was directing a play, and uh, there was a notice, a, a letter from him on the on the the board backstage that said there will be a full company rehearsal on Saturday morning to remove all of the improvements. <laughs> <laughs> You said you, had, you said you auditioned for the part for Yellowstone and, and that they got it. When you auditioned, did you think you'd done it? Did you think you'd gotten it? Did you think I really nailed this? And how are you in general with judging your audition performances? That's a great question. I am so neurotic. <laughs> I, I, and I torture myself. I, I do. Oh. I, I mean, I, I prepare very very hard for for auditions and I like to I do my best when I learn the lines yeah and when I just know it like I know my name mm -hmm. then I feel free I've got the freedom to to play to be playful and I've got my colors 
if I'm fishing for lines in my head, if I'm trying to, mm. you know, if I'm thinking about the lines, I'm, I'm, I'm in trouble. That's not the case for everybody. Not the case for everybody. Some people will hold the lines in their hands and refer to them and read them. And, and, and they're, they're great. They're brilliant at that. Um, for me, I, I need to learn them. Um, but to, to answer your question, um, uh, uh, there are times that I've felt that I killed it, that I nailed it, and I never heard anything from them, which really hurts. Yeah. That's hard. Yeah. That's, uh, I, mm -hmm. I don't know how people, I don't know how we do this. I really don't. <laughs> Either. It's, uh, it's the nature of the business. It's the nature of the beast. But that's one be, of the things also, like, as, as supportive as Michael of, was of me when I was widowed, you know, now... I, I'm always telling him, will you stop being so goddamn hard on yourself? You're amazing. <laughs> but yes, he actually did me the great honor of asking me to be a guest teacher in his class a couple of times. Ooh, nice. Yep. nice. Um, but, you know, we'll talk about different performances or whatever, and he'll be like, well, I don't know if I'm any good. And I'm like, will you stop that bullshit? <laughs> He's, okay. he's a master. Watching him teach, it's so effortless. And the insights that he comes up with to give the students is just fabulous. It's really great. What do you think your best skill as a teacher is? Like, like if you can give us a tip, you know, get, what would be a great tip? Or is it just how you see people and what they're doing and you just kind of work on an individual basis? And what do you think your teaching strengths are? Yeah. Thank you for that question. It's a good one. Um, Thank you. You know, I've always wanted to say, I've always wanted to be doing an interview and, and have somebody ask a question and say, that's a really dumb question. <laughs> oh, I missed it an hour ago, so we'll, we'll get there. You know, <laughs> a lot of time. Because everybody, everybody, they always say, that's a great question. You know? <laughs> yeah, right, right. Um, I, I, I take my cue from the students. The bottom line is to be is to be real and to be simple. And if I were to, the, the name of my class is the joy of acting. Uh, in nice. parenthesis, pardon me. Very nice. That's a good term for it. <laughs> yeah, you should joy be joyful. I mean, sometimes when I've been in acting classes before, and the people were not full of joy. They were they were angry, or they were sad, or they were you know totally fearful. So you're right. right. It's joyful. It should be joyful. It should be. If it's not, it's too hard. It's, it's just too hard. So I I, well, I I try I try to encourage the students to stop acting, just to not act. <laughs> to breathe and it all comes back to the breath just breathing 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 I, I i i try to encourage them to see me as a human being and not as uh, a celebrity uh, yes not as a celebrity no yeah. they want you want them to connect with you you know for for what you're trying to impart on them not for oh look at me i'm this guru you know Years right. ago, I was in an acting class and the, the acting teacher, he was kind of a nobody, but he had had a few small parts here and there. And he thought he was a somebody and he was an alcoholic because when he came, he would smell of alcohol. And he was so hard yeah. on everybody. So when you said the joy of acting, that class just flashed into my head. And I thought I hated that acting class so much. Like I, I just regret There was no joy. No there joy. was no joy in it. I did, I did not want to go to the class at all, you know, because there was this madman who thought he was this, you know, wonderful, you know, a-list celebrity teaching this class and that we were all these peons and everybody in the class walked on eggshells. Wow. Well, Vicki, here's know. the thing about acting. Acting is authentic. And if you're drunk, you're not present. Correct. So it, the, the whole premise is shot out the window to begin with. I had a really great acting teacher too, Kenneth McMillan, who was Baron Harkonnen in Dune and you've seen him in of stuff. He would come to class like really high. A lot of like, I gathered like I found out after he died that he liked to <sighs> ski in the bathroom a little bit, but, uh, <laughs> but he was present. Yeah, I mean, was, I, I mean, I grew up in New York, and I, I was I was supposedly in my head on the acting path, and I went to AADA, and I studied with Uta Hag, and I went to HB Studios. I also studied with Susan Strasberg because I was at the Lee, Lee, you know, Lee Strasberg. Lee Strasberg. 
And I did that all in my youth. And it was amazing. And I just didn't have, to be honest, I didn't have the chops, not, not as an actor, but just for like the rejection and, and that stuff and, and living from like, you know, hand to mouth. I was like, no, 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 I need a steady job. And I, I, I just couldn't do that. And, and yet I still did it, but it, it's hard. It's hard to be an actor. It really is to be a true actor. It's about the passion and not the money. And that, that to me true. is, it has been, that's why I prefer, I mean, I love theater. I've always loved theater. I think some of the best, if you, if there's a lot of TV actors or movie actors that haven't done theater, and to me, they're okay actors, but if you have done theater, then you have the chops to be an actor. Yeah. My opinion, my opinion only, not the opinion of the network that I work for. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you something. When I, was, when I was about 14 and I was teetering at that time, I had grown up thinking like my parents, I was going to be a doctor. And then I started doing, you know, a lot of theater at school and really, really getting into it. And then I had the most amazing teacher at Santa Monica High School, believe it or not. I had us doing Bertolt Brecht and, you know, the Diary of Anne Frank in high school, which is crazy. And so I was sitting watching TV one day and it was an interview with Jane Fonda. And she said something that set my life path for me. She said, they asked her that question, if you had any advice to give to a young upcoming actress today, what would you, you know? And so she was like, here's what I'll say. Don't go into acting because you want to. Be an actor because you have to, mm -hmm. because you need to, because you feel like something in you is missing if you're not pursuing that. Yeah. And she identified the fire that I had developed in my belly for me that made it immediately apparent to me, I'm not going to medical school. Being a performer is who I am. Mm. Yeah. Amazing. Can I ask Michael a question? Hold on. I want to take a caller. Can we put a hold on that for okay, a moment? Sure, sure. Hello. Welcome to Between the Sheets. Hello. Hi. Hello. Hello, is this Joe? Yes. yes, this is Joe Papadennis calling. Hi, Joe. Thank Hi, you very Joe. much. Yeah. Hi. Hi, everybody. Hello, hello, everyone. Um, so my... Joe? Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Um, okay, so um, Michael, I just wanted to say that you are the most genuine, authentic, actor that I have heard speaking. Um, I could listen to you all night long talking about mm -hmm. the business. Um, wow. Thank you very it's much. It's like an art for you. You're an artist. I mean, it's, it's yeah. evident. You love it. So thank you. Thank you. Are you, are, are you in the business? Are you an actor? I, um, not exactly. <laughs> Not exactly. I'm a I'm a dancer. I'm a da I'm a dancer and a photographer and do films. So I really appreciate art. So uh, yes. you know, it was an amazing ballroom, isn't it? Ballroom and um, all, what other? What's the kind of dance you do, Joe? Cha cha cha. <laughs> Joe actually won. Joe, you won the you won the Gay Dance Olympics or something, right? I, I just fucked that up. What what did you win? You won you won this. That's okay. <laughs> it's it yeah, it's it's fine. But it's yeah, it's um but it's definitely um nothing like I mean, like I said, Michael, I'm just it's just such a pleasure to hear you speak because you know, I, I watch talk shows on TV or you know, listen and there's just always this certain um facade or something there's something there there's something between between us right between the audience and the actor and you just kind of boom you're just there i Thank love you. it i love that's, it I'm just, the, I'm just like wow great i i think what you're appreciating is the lack of performance yes <laughs> yes. It's yes. Yes. That's it. as long as that's your ex-girlfriend doesn't say that <laughs> 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 so I so my question for you is um if you had to start if you had to do it over 
I mean, I know this is a huge question. What would you do differently, if anything? That's a real stupid question. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. It's no, I'm kidding. Kidding. no, it's a joke. It was it was a joke. We were just talking about that. Joe, well, I'm, see, I'm, when I, I was on hold, I oh. couldn't hear anything. Oh, oh. <laughs> Joe, I'm, 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 I was I'm so sorry. I'm, I'm pulling. I'm pulling your leg. I'm pulling your leg. Oh um, I'm in a I'm in a wheelchair, so um, <laughs> she's not. She's That's not. a joke. Got you. I'm sorry. That was a really bad joke, too. Oh God. <laughs> like, but um, it's a huge question. I, but I was just thinking off the top of your head. I mean, I don't know. During COVID time, <laughs> during reflection, I mean, do you think about uh, what else would you do? What yeah. What else would you have liked to do instead of acting? Um. Being a musician, being a, uh, 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 being James Taylor. Really? James, James oh, Taylor is one of my so good. musical I got to tell you something really quick. Of the wow. When I was a kid, I used to have a Barbie doll and I had a Donnie doll from Donnie and Marie. And I would make my Barbie and my Donnie doll dance to James Taylor, my handyman. Remember that song? Yeah. My mom got it for me at a garage sale, this album that had all these different songs on it. And so when you mentioned James Taylor, oh my God, it just comes right to life. My Barbie and my Donnie doll dancing and being romantic. Uh, <laughs> so then just imagine uh, why you pitching maybe doing this to little girls in their suburban bedrooms across across the country. <laughs> Why do you pick uh, James Taylor? He's been a musical hero of mine since he came on the scene. We are the same age. Uh, we um, we just we have a we have very similar backgrounds, uh, minus the the challenge with drugs. I I was spared that experience, um, and I'm really happy for James that he has survived that and provided us with so much amazing music amazing uh, his his music just touches me there's something about there's something about his voice his mm -hmm. lyrics his music also i play guitar i love to play the guitar um there's something about there's something about james that makes go ahead I was just going to say, would you say, I mean, because the way you speak, <laughs> really, Gan knows me. I don't do this. I don't go on like this. He doesn't gush. But, um, not a when, gusher. When you, yeah, I'm not a gusher. Right. But when you speak, there's like a little, soul, there's some kind of a soulfulness there somewhere that kind of comes out. Um, maybe James, I'm not really that familiar with James Taylor, but maybe he, I don't know, does he have the same kind of thing going on? Joe, yes. you're old enough to know who the hell James Taylor is, please. <laughs> you, yeah. I'm, I'm oh, 12. she doesn't know. Come I'm on, 12. you gotta know handyman. His lyrics no, are I don't, so beautiful. I don't really. He wasn't. Uh, yeah, one of in my. Well, she is Canadian. But, uh, so, you know. I mean, I'm wait a minute. The my Voice ignorance. just had James Taylor on last year as their musical prodigy guest, like their super celebrity guest. Not this past season, but the season prior to that on The Voice. Really? They had James yeah. Taylor on, and I'm going to tell you. Yeah, I, I do, I do, I do know who James Taylor is. I'm just not that uh, much of an uh, aficionado on ah, his right. voice. But, but I'm thinking uh -oh. that that's I don't know. Well, there's a thing about the James. Soulfulness. There's something about there. He is soulful, and there's something about him that makes me feel safe. Yeah, and mm -hmm. that is uh -huh. that's what that's what I look for. Uh -huh. That's pretty much, I think, right. as human beings, what we look for in, in everything that we do. Just keep your phone with you. Yeah, I think, um, yeah, I mean, and that's another thing. I mean, it's being safe. You know, like, if you want to, if we're going to go a little bit to the other side, a little psychological, a little spiritual, I think fear is what holds a lot of people back and holds back people from their full potential, no matter what. And I right. think with you, Michael, and, 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 you know, I think as an actor with you and, and other great actors is you put that fear aside and you just go with your intuition, you go with your instinct, you just don't act. It's, it, it embodies you. It, it's a, it's, it's a spirituality. It, oh. it just something that just as joe said i think at one point so soulful so raw so authentic you drop your guard and that is a wonderful actor that is a wonderful musician 
You know, mm. when someone hits the stage, you know, all these little pop princes yeah. and pop princes, they go up there and there. You don't feel, you don't feel them. I don't, I go to a concert or I see them at the Grammys. I don't feel any emotion, any, but then you put on some, you, you have a concert with like a James Taylor or, or a Carol King or, I mean, and there are newer ones. I, I love Annie Lennox. Annie Lennox to me is a goddess. Yeah, you know, you, you put that type of talent and they mm -hmm. perform, you feel it. You feel I don't it. Know when that there's a good actor, then when there's a good actor, when you're watching them on screen or you're watching them on stage, you can feel, you can- I had four throw to JLo a few months ago and I'll tell you what, I felt it. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, <laughs> that's hilarious. Yeah. Well, let me just tell you, Jay. Wait, wait, wait. I gotta, I gotta interject something here. For those of you who have not seen Yellowstone, the woman Kelly that he was talking about that yeah. he works with, that woman has the chops of anybody from Meryl Streep to to um, Glenn Close. She gets so raw on this show. Her but performance. You know phenomenal and I highly recommend I, I mean I agree with you but I have to say and I don't know what it is because I am addicted to English TV British British really yeah. the authenticity of the English or the Australians or you know European actors I mean like I remember now I'm going back a really long time she's been dead for years but there was an, an Italian actress named Anna Magnani. Yep. Yeah. And she could barely speak English, but it didn't matter. She was on that screen. And there's a difference. You had Anna Magnani, Sophia Loren, and then you had Gina Lola Brigida. I, I'm, a, yep. I'm an Italian, so you know I'm going to compare my people. Gina mm. Lola Brigida yeah. was not a very good actress. She was eye candy. Yeah. Sophia Loren. This is our. Yeah. Sophia Loren was a good actress, but Anna Magnani was a great actress. In my yeah. book, in my book, and if no one's ever seen, what was it, The Rose Tattoo, and I think she played Sophia Loren's mother, was that it? Yes. No, I think, I think it you're, was. You're out of my age range with these here, I'm being honest. Well, it doesn't matter. I'm younger, I'm a little older than you, but, you know, I've always been obsessed with, with movies classics. and TV and classics. And okay. I can go back to the 1930s and tell you shit. And I was, I was born in 63 because that is my passion. And, you know, and that is the difference. It's the raw, it's the authenticity. It's putting yourself yeah, in the ball to minute. put yourself look out. At, may look, I, at, may I, look at who's afraid of Regina Wolf. May I ask Wolf. another question? Yeah. I may I ask another question? Yes, Joe. Um, okay, thanks. Michael, um, are you doing any theater around town anywhere? I mean, I know it, it can't be like indoors, but I'd love to see you in, in theater. You can take his acting class. You're, you're, you just arrive. Yeah. You've got a there there, you know? Are you, are you um, in Los Angeles? Yeah, I'm in Santa Monica. Oh, well, my class is in Santa Monica on Main Street, and you're invited. Very nice. Say what? Hey. <laughs> Joe, you just <laughs> want to teach you it. Just won a prize, it. Joe. Seriously? Uh, everyone who's everyone. Are I'm you serious? Kid, you will get a prize yes. if you listen to us. And he's oh my God, I'd love to. I'd, I'd love to uh, come and listen. I'd love to. You okay, so you ready for, you ready? Did you have a, you have a pen and paper? Uh, I do. You, you can tell me, Michael. Joe's a good Okay. Friend. Okay. Joe, oh, yeah, all you have ahead. to do is remember the, the Edgemar, Edgemar Theater, the Edgemar Center for Performing Arts. It's on Main Street next to Earth Cafe. You know mm -hmm. where Earth Cafe is on Main Street? Yep. I'll find okay. it. Okay. It's called the Edgemar, uh, Edgemar Center for Performing Arts, and it's Sunday afternoon, 2.30 to 5.30. And you, you'd be my guest. Wow. Okay. Very wow, nice. Joe. Wow. wow. Thank you. Thank you so much. Oh my God. How generous. Wow. Okay. I'd love to. Not, not this, not this Sunday you. because of the Super Bowl, but starting next Sunday. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, thank you. Good. So. Appreciate you calling in. Thank Joe. you so much. Yeah, and who are you And thank for, you Michael? for taking the time to talk to me. Bye, honey. Bye, bye, love. Bye, bye, Joe. Yeah. Who are you rooting for on the Super Bowl? Speaking of Super Bowl, who's your team this year? Kansas City. 
All yes. right, the Chiefs, huh? Yeah, yeah. I, I just I love Patrick Mahomes. I love the quarterback. Yeah. Right. And the team. I think that's just great. And I love Tom Brady too. I just I just want to see him go into I want to see a great game and I think it's gonna be an amazing game. Yeah. I agree. Nice. There are um there's a dolphin that has made predictions and it, <laughs> oh, yeah, it's on I a saw six, that. Six streak winning streak and the dolphin picked the, the Kansas City. Really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> wow. Fantastic. You know, really cool. I'm completely quiet. I know nothing about sports, could care Any, less. I'm changing. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, can we move this conversation on? Because I'm bored. <laughs> Mara, yeah, remember I that got, line, Mara? What? Oh, fun. yes, I remember that line. And I, I'm right there with you, Gay, I hate sports. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I'll, I'll root um, for them, too. I, but I, I have a question. Year, I would like last to. Last year, I was supposed to be doing a, a jazz album. And, of course, COVID hit and that got pushed to this year. And uh, so now we're looking to get the financing done. And um, Michael has graciously agreed to do a duet with me. Oh, and wow. I cool. on uh, Ceci Bon. You guys know that song? Yes, I do. Yeah. 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 Do a little bit of it right now. Yes. How about a little taste? You can't He's got to learn oh. the word. I don't know if he knows this, all the words yet, but I don't even know all the words, but I think it's going to be a really fun duet. Uh, well, you don't, have, don't even need to know the words, Durga and Michael. Just act like you have a French accent. No one's going to pay attention. Yeah, just <laughs> <laughs> no, you can't sing like that. I'm kidding, silly. I'm so kidding. You know, you know me. Hey, Michael, I have a question. Have you directed? I mean, have you done any major, um, any, any directing in your career? No, I have not. Not yet. You, so you, would you like to sort of dabble in that? Y yes. Yes. I, well, yes, at the risk of sounding like a dilettante, uh, dabble. <laughs> yeah. Dabble, yeah. Yeah. I, I would love, I really would enjoy, I really would enjoy directing. Yes, I would. Cara, Cara did you want to ask a question? I did. I, I wondered, have you ever had to gain loads of weight for a part and then had to lose it? How do people do that? that it's incredible. Weird. Yeah. I just when, saw Amy Adams in a movie. I'm afraid I can't remember what it was called, but she's transformed. I mean, like yeah. Christian Bale and those people. They just and then they and then they do and then they do go back oh, in a short well, time. Yeah, was it Hillbilly Elegy that you saw yes. her in? Yes. Yes. Yeah. All right. She was great. I didn't. See yeah. That. Yeah. You she's, can see it on right now. Yeah, I saw it a few weeks ago. Did she put on a ton of weight for that or something? Yeah. yeah. Oh, hmm. yeah, she that really, part would be really, fun. really got into the part. I haven't even been able to lose any weight in this past year, let alone be an actor and do it. The diet that you have, you know, like because they seem to do it. I mean, I guess they have trainers, I don't know how they. I guess if someone paid me like a million dollars, I might. I guess they are getting a million dollars. <laughs> what does Michael say? <laughs> Thank you, Mara. <laughs> Thank you, Mara. The question hence was for Michael. Yeah. <laughs> what was the, what was the question again? <laughs> Have you ever had to get fat or get thin? Oh, yes, I've lost weight. I've never had to gain a lot of weight, but I have. Uh, no. I've, I've I've lost. Yes, I've lost. I think the most weight I've lost was about 25, 30 pounds to play a role. Wow! Wow! Oh, oh. And was that yeah. like you getting the role? Did they say right? We start we start rehearsals in six weeks. We'll see you then. Twenty five pounds later. Has, has that no, they didn't. They didn't even ask me to lose the weight. I just did oh. it. Um, I did it on my own. Nice. Yeah, um, Michael. What's the what's um what's on your plate next? Yes, um, there is a TV series called Devils, Ooh. starring Patrick Dempsey, <laughs> and we had one season. It's on the CW network. And uh, they have ordered a new season. And I just got the call this week that um, they want me to come to Rome. I have to, I have to accept payment to go to Rome. For you. Oh, I'm so sorry. It sounds like a horrible <laughs> I know, I know, I know. And um, I am playing the, um, what am I playing? The global CEO a major a guy who manipulates the world currency he's he's, he's a devil he's he's a he's he's, he's a bad guy 
What role has brought you the most, aside from Devils and Yellowstone, which are still paying the bills, excluding them, what yeah. roles have brought you the most joy? The most joy? I thought you were yeah. going to say the most income. <laughs> that was going to be my follow-up question. Which would, probably, <laughs> would probably be flash dance. That would be oh. the, most, the most income. Really? Uh, the most joy was... Besides Victor Victoria with Julie Andrews, mm, yeah. which was yeah. a year and a half of joy every single day, um, eight shows a week. Wow. Um, let's see. I know, I know. Playing Emile de Beck in South Pacific. Oh, really? In the national tour of South Pacific right after 9-11. Wow. wow. When they were not sure whether we were going to take it on the road or not. And thank God that we did because the country was so vulnerable. Yeah. Uh, and we, we took it on the road. And at the end of every curtain call, we sang God Bless America with the audience. And oh, wow. uh, we raised money for the victims of 9-11. Of wow. And uh, the poignance of um, South Pacific, as you know, is about a time in America's history when America was at war with Japan and Germany. And it was the only time that America, until 9-11, that America was attacked. Uh, <clears throat> Pearl Harbor and then 9-11 was the first time that America was attacked on its own, own territory. So it made made doing the show very poignant and um, and emotional. So I think that that was probably, yeah, that was poignant and powerful. Victor Victoria was sheer joyful, um, and there have been there have been others, I'm sure, but those those are the ones that stand out. And Michael, so, on your on your downtime, or you know. Um, are you still an ambassador and working with or having um, some ties to the National Multiple Sclerosis Society? Yes, that's a mouthful, isn't it? It certainly <laughs> is. <laughs> yes, I have yeah. a family family member who has MS. Mm -hmm. And so I do whatever I can showing up and whatever I can do to support, to support the MS society. And besides and, acting and being an ambassador for MS and what do you do for fun? I mean, I know you do, that's your passion. So theater and acting, and, but what do you do outside of that? Um, in, in, in a time of non COVID. Yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, I hang out with, hang out with my friends. I, I love to <laughs> just hang out and have coffee and have lunch and have dinner. I love to travel. I love Europe. Um, in yes, the, the, I want to go home. <laughs> right, I know, I know, oh. sweetheart. I know, I know. I miss, I miss London terribly, and mm -hmm. uh, I, I've got my PG tips here to keep me uh, company. Oh, uh, I too. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, traveling. Hey, I will say, I will say that Michael gave me my first opportunity to really get. Um, um, what's the word not bombarded but kind of ambushed by the paparazzi because really? he took me to dinner yeah in in west hollywood and we came out of the restaurant and they're like shh, shh, shh. and i was like whoa <laughs> i saw that photo it was in front of craig's yes it was in front of I craig's yeah. in front of craig's it's I, yes it is i saw it on the internet <laughs> i never saw it oh <laughs> that's so funny when was that Durga? Oh, that was a so couple of months ago it was March. No, it was March. Than that. March or May, May, March or May of 2020. No, yeah. it had to be. It had to be March, or it either was March before COVID, or it was yeah. May when they opened up for open air dining. No, 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 no. no. It was before open before, air dining. It was before, before COVID, so it was like a year ago. Actually. In the good old days, you mean? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I wanted to to interject one other thing here. Um, just because I like to keep people's awareness about this. Michael, you said that, that Pearl Harbor was the first time America had ever been attacked. And that's true. Uh, that was the first time we were attacked by uh, uh, for, uh, no, another country. Right. 
um, the Tulsa race riots was the first time that planes bombed a U.S. city, and it was Americans bombing another Amer uh, uh, bombing other Americans. It was white people that were angry that Tulsa and that the area in Tulsa Greenwood had become this up and coming thriving Black Wall Street, as they called. It. And it was oh. the first time there was an attack on American soil from wow. a plane, Amer an American town. And it was white Americans bombing black Americans. It's the whole wow. thing that they should like at the beginning of um, that great Regina King show that was on. Um, um, Lovecraft County? Show. No. No, no, no. That's a different one. Um, the Watchmen. 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 Oh. The Watchmen showed, they showed it. And it was amazing to me that so many people were like, I never knew this actually happened. Well, yeah, I did. It was in the 20s. Wow. wow. I did not know that either. Thank you for telling me that. Neither. Yeah. yeah. Um, were you ever, Michael, did you ever have an interest with writing? Did you ever do any writing? I have not. Oh, I have okay. not. I'm, I'm very undisciplined in that area. <laughs> <laughs> okay, back to your, I'm curious about when you were talking about the roles that gave you the most joy. I'm wondering if you ever went through a role that really messed you up. Mm. Or, or maybe it was hard for you, very. Yes, yes. There was a movie, um, there's a television movie with, um, um, what's her name? Um, I think we mentioned it earlier. Um, where I, I played, it was called Shattered Dreams, and I was playing John Fetters, who was the head of the exchange, the, the um, um, oh, what's the Securities Exchange Commission. Oh. And it's a story about a man who battered and beat his wife oh. mercilessly. It's a true, true story. Huh. And uh, that was really, really difficult. Well, we had to shoot the scenes where she was visibly pregnant, and I, I had to, oh. I had to punch her. And the she that he's talking about, because it was a CBS Sarah. week that nope that I worked on was Lindsay Wagner, yep. the Bionic Woman. Lindsay, oh. really? Oh. Right. Wow. I mean, can you just leave that scene after you know, leave that and just chill out at home, or is that something that sticks with you while you're going after it's over and you're going about your day? No, I went back to my I went back to my trailer and cried. Oh, oh my God! Yeah, yeah, yeah that's that's profound. Oh and you had to be a little scared punching the bionic woman. I mean, if she really got <laughs> mad, she would kick the shit. <laughs> it didn't really Complete with sound effects. Yeah, right. <laughs> Michael, yeah. I hear Michael coming. <laughs> so, Michael, you live in Los Angeles. I mean, do you have a place in New York to, uh, on the East Coast, or you're mostly California? You're mostly West Coast. No, I'm just here. I'm in just Cal here. California. In California, yeah. Oh. Still a New Yorker. Still a New Yorker. <laughs> hey, do you have kids? You have two kids. The two kids you have? I have two grown daughters, and I have three grandsons. Ah. Oh. Oh. How lovely. Are they yeah. in the acting world as well? My daughter loves acting. One of my daughters loves acting. The other, my other daughter is a teacher. She teaches uh, in the Waldorf school mm. and she teaches grades um, uh, kindergarten through five. What does she teach? How to make a salad? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> is she teaching in, in class, Michael? Is she doing it remotely? What kind of challenges? That's got to be so hard for teachers or is she there in class? Yeah, she's in real in class in Maui. She's in Maui, so oh, there. I have a Waldorf in Maui. Oh, yeah, you know. Yeah, and uh, you, you, last year she was teaching at the Green School in in Bali. Oh, oh wow! wow. Cool. Bad. Making salads <laughs> <laughs> by the seaside. <laughs> right. I, I would be I I would be remiss, and it would be incomplete if I did not mention meditation and what an important part of my life that has been for the past 50 years. Wow. And I, I have a, uh, I would just like to introduce you to my teacher. His name is Prem, P-R-E-M, which means love. And uh, he taught me how to meditate about 50 years ago. And I was introduced to him by my, my mom, who was convinced that he was a, a fraud <laughs> and taking advantage of 
a lot of young kids because at that time he was 13 years old. This is 50 years ago. Oh, wow. He was 13 years old, and um, my younger brother wanted to go to India to see him. And my mother went to chaperone my brother and to expose Prem as a fraud. And she came back three weeks later practicing meditation. Wow. And that's how I, how I started meditating. And uh, it's something that I, I do on a daily basis and have. I, I haven't really missed a day. Wow. After 50 years of meditation, you must be so, it's just like breathing now, I bet. Because for people like me and Gayanne, you know, it's kind of hard <laughs> it, it, to get, it takes some time to build up to that. Well, you know, Mara, let's start with we're ADHD. So unless well, we're medicated, we can't meditate. So no medication, well, no meditation. I'm trying to meditate, <laughs> but I just think that Michael must have must be able to just it must be so familiar to just slip into that meditational. Or do you do you ever have days that are difficult to do that? Yes, sure, okay. mm -hmm. sure. There are days that the the mind is very resistant and doesn't want to meditate and doesn't want to sit down and sit still. It wants to do anything but sit still okay. and, be, and be quiet and those are the days that i need it the most Absolutely. <laughs> right. there's a show on netflix about meditation it's a guy who um used to be a monk whose name is i don't know maybe he's still a monk i don't know is it like a marine once you're a monk you're always a monk but anyway he does this <laughs> thing on netflix or when you're it, a jet you're always a jet there you go that too jets <laughs> marines and monks but at any rate he's it's a guided meditation, but it's, each show is about 20 minutes long. And the first one, he sort of talks about the topic and he just sort of gradually talks a little slower and then gets you into this guided meditation. But I was actually going to ask you about that because you mentioned earlier when you were talking about teaching your actors that breathing was so important. And uh, Durga, you were mentioning when you were talking about singing and stuff. And it's just, it's like, you know, actors and musicians and, and the arts, whether it's, you know, even painting and, and things of that nature, because that's very meditative that you do them, removing them from schools. And it's such a shame because it's such a critical part of humanness. It helps you, like you were saying, with, with acting or with singing or with, you know, with meditating and getting yourself whole. It's, it's such, such a shame because it's such a, an important thing, you know, to be able to do that. Um, yes. Central. Yeah. Oh, you know, I, I was with that. that. I just started rambling. <laughs> you know, Michael, when you, when you meditate, sorry, go ahead, Durga. Uh, I was saying I was driving down Sunset Boulevard the other day, and um, uh, it's the sweetest taboo by Sade came on oh, the radio. Love that song. And uh, in the summer of 2019, now I like, just I cannot believe 2020 just like is empty. Yeah. I can't go. Oh yeah, you know, it was like me in my house. But uh, so wow, right. so 2019, I did a show at my favorite spa, uh, which is an hour outside of uh, Venezia in Italy. And uh, we do this show called Jazz by the Pool. And I did it with my sister. And that was one of the songs we did. And I was instantly, the minute I heard the opening of that song, I was transported back to that stage. And everybody, you know, the, it's one of those songs that, you know, the rehearsals, really came together and the song when we started it in the show everyone was smiling and we were just feeling that that groove and i had the shaker in my hand and it just came off beautifully and the minute you know i was going to sing along with it and i just started crying oh. because i for I'd forgotten how much i miss that feeling of connecting with the musicians. Yeah, it's nice to have the audience there. I'm not one of those people that needs the adulation. That's not why I do this. But just feeling in the pocket and feeling the band and having my sister singing with me and all of us looking at each other like, this sounds really good, you know? <laughs> um, I didn't realize how much I'd missed that. And yeah. the, the, that to me is my meditation in a lot of cases. I mean, I do meditate too, yeah. not regularly because I'm really fucking lazy. But um, <laughs> the, my, one of my greatest teachers taught me, who, Werner Earhart, actually. A lot of people think he's a charlatan, but he was like an uncle to me and he created Est and a lot of other stuff. He taught me that true mastery is when you disappear and the art is what's left there. And that was one of those moments where I disappeared and all that was there was the song. It was like coming through me. I was like a conduit. Mm. And it was just 
that moment is locked in my soul. Exactly. And I really was like in mourning. I, st- I was sobbing driving down the freeway because I didn't remember how much I missed that. I think we all miss I- it. Cheryl, you were going to say something. Yeah, you just add something. Ask Michael about his meditation. Um, are you meditating as Durga was with music, or is it a mantra that you're saying, or in the quietness, the stillness? Mm-hmm. There is no mantra with this meditation. There are four techniques, four very uh, um, old techniques that are written about. Um, it's it's not a it's not a secret. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, I spend, my goal is to spend 15 minutes on each technique. Wow. And, um, uh, I find that an, an hour passes very quickly. Um, mm-hmm. uh, it, it seems like a real challenge in the beginning because the mind, our mind is so resistant to, to being still. It's just, it's nature. It's being true to itself. Mm-hmm. The mind is always got to be doing something. It's, it's either projecting into the future, reflecting on the past. The only place that the mind does not know how to hang out is in the present moment. Mm. So, yeah. and that's where the breath comes in. That's, that's, the, that's the power and the glory of the breath. Because in that breath, in the space between the inhalation and the exhalation is the perfect still moment where life is happening that's where the energy that sustains us is happening and the mind which is like a tuning fork if you take two tuning forks one tuning fork is still and the other tuning fork you strike it and it's vibrating the still tuning fork will start to vibrate at the the same frequency as the one that's in motion so in the same way when we focus our attention on something that is perfectly vibrating, it starts to vibrate at that same frequency. Does that make sense? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Is, Michael, someone asked, is there a name to the technique that you practice? There is a name, I'll give you the name for the teacher. And his name is Prem, P-R-E-M, Prem. Rawat, R-A-W-A-T. And you can look him up on Google. Prem. And Prem Rawat. What do you, have you heard of? Obviously, you've heard of Abraham Hicks and Esther. What do you? What are your thoughts on that? I really enjoy them. Yeah, I, I really, I so enjoy them. I mm-hmm. think they're they're just wonderful. There's so many wonderful teachers. Uh, yeah. they, Werner Earhart is a great teacher. Uh, Who's the disposal there- guy? Joe, John, Joe Dispenza. Joe Dispenza. I love Dr. Joe. Dispenza. Joe. My sister loves him. Love Dr. Joe. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, Michael, this all just totally makes sense now that this is why you are so grounded. You know, it's because you have a practice and yeah. it's a perfect practice. And, and my favorite word for breath is prana. Um, it's the Sanskrit word, Sanskrit word for, I just love that word. I don't know why, but it is true. And, and Mara's right. At least Mara and I have talked about it to get to getting the mind to just stop and, and just really be present. If, if people could be present more often and it, it is, it takes work. You know, when people go, I'm present, you're really not present. So I think, you know, whatever the technique is, and I'm certainly going to look this up because I can't meditate. I've tried, but I have a difficult time being present and mm. still. And I'm 57, so I better get it right soon. Um, <laughs> so, but um, but you know, it's just for me. I want to thank you for being on tonight's show. See, it, an hour and a half has passed so quickly. Thank you for being on our show. I'm completely honored to find out a whole other side of you besides the actor as a person and, and letting us into your life tonight and, and not being on and just being so genuine and raw and open and honest and authentic. I wanna say thank you. I want to really say thank you. And it has been our pleasure. 
So um, everyone, I just want to say thank you for watching us tonight. Thank you, Michael Nori. I mean, you know, look, as far as I'm concerned, I don't care if you're a guy, you can come on anytime and be <laughs> part of the show because you have added to my life tonight with your insight, the ladies' lives and every viewer out there and listener. So thank you. You are so kind and just so amazing. So thank you so much. For sure. And Thank you. Told you. <laughs> I know, for Eric, I Derek has been talking about you for a long time. So everyone, thank you for watching Between the Sheets here on the United Broadcasting Network or UBN Go. Follow me on Instagram, QTE Brat. Please like our Facebook page, um, Between the Sheets Podcast. All the shows and tonight's show will be up on the YouTube channel sometime this weekend. And the audio portion will be on every single aggregator that's out there. Again, thank you for supporting us. Thank you for being part of the crowd, part of the team. Um, I still don't understand why you guys don't call in. I mean, you're all like, not calling in. Um, we don't buy, <laughs> we want, we want to hear what you have to say. So thank you guys for constantly being there. Always, you know, love. <clears throat> Everything is all about love. And I know that sounds like a cliche, but seriously, if you have an open heart, you'll have an open mind and that will help you be present, be kind, always be compassionate and always come from a place of love. I'm, I'm like choking up because I'm choking up because I'm going to cry, but I might as well do that too because <laughs> I'm so fucking Drink emotional. Some water. Good for you. Medicinal purposes. Cries are very Medicinal good. purposes. But breathe. Breathe. Prana, prana, prana. So thank you guys. Thank you, Michael. We look forward to seeing the rest of whatever else you're coming. You're always welcome to come back. Everybody, Yellowstone. And what's the other name of the show? Devils. With Devils. De Devils. Devils. Watch, come watch that on CW. Thank you again, Michael. Where can people find you, Michael? Do you have a Facebook page? Do you have an Instagram account? I have an Instagram account and I have Facebook. Thank you. I have both. And may I say thank you to you and thank you to each one of you for making me feel so welcome and oh. so appreciated. Thank you so much. Treat. Thank you. And please, please invite me back. You just just want to look, you don't even need an invitation. I, it just, uh -huh. you know, I, it can, Dirk, can Durga give me your phone number after we're done? Yes, <laughs> absolutely. Okay, she, cool. She can, she can give each one of you my phone number. Oh, you're so hey. sweet. <laughs> I want a first night ticket when you go back on Broadway. What's that? Yeah. First night ticket when you go back on Broadway. I want to be there, baby. I, I want you to be there. <laughs> you know who he there. wants to If I, anybody's listening who wants to put up a great production, Put Michael in a production of Zorba the Greek. Oh, yeah. I saw Anthony Quinn in it on Broadway. Was his name Anthony Quinn? Yes. Yeah. I saw him on Broadway. And then we went to Regine's. There was a club in New York called Regine's. And I was just a yeah. kid then. We all went to Regine's and we were all partying. And I got to dance with Anthony Quinn. He wasn't that handsy, but it was fun. It was fun. Um <laughs> Will you excuse me? I have to I have to sign off. I have to take Thank a call. Michael. Thank All you. Right. Thank you so much. Thank, thank you. Hi, Michael. Hi, Michael. Thank you. Everybody, thank again, thank you for watching Between the Sheets here on UBN Go. Durga, where can people find you? Uh, I have two Facebook, actually three Facebook pages. Uh, Durga Diva on Instagram, Durga Diva on YouTube, um, and Mrs. Durga McBroom on Twitter. Thank you. Cara, where can people find you? In any restaurant outside in LA, I'll be there. <laughs> and Vicky, where can people find you, darling? Definitely on Facebook. I'm also Vicky Wagner on Twitter. And Jenny McNulty, what's going on with you? I will be standing behind Kara with a mask going, put this fucking on, put this fucking on. <laughs> uh, or you can find me at Jenny McNulty. Uh, Jenny McNulty cool. fan. <laughs> <laughs> Laura Shane, what's going on with you? Where, where can people find you? Uh, people can find me on Facebook as uh, Mara Shane, and actually, they can also find me on uh, marashaneart.com and Instagram, Mara underscore Shane. Thank you, Mara. And Cheryl, what's going on with you, and where can people find you? Guys, my website is mediumcheryl.com, and I'm working on a fundraiser. You can come see my online fundraiser event February 10th, where we're raising money for Angel Project Food. 
uh, just to let you know, a Los Angeles-based uh, wonderful organization. And then also my Facebook and Instagram is at Medium Cheryl. So check out my events page too. You'll find out what I'm up to. Awesome. Everyone, again, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Christian and Tony before Christian and running the boards tonight for us for a seamless show. QTE Brett. QTE Brett is my Instagram account. Uh, follow the Facebook page Between the Sheets podcast. First and third Friday of every month. We'll be here in two weeks. Um, um, there, as of right now, there won't be a guest, but I'm trying to put together a sort of reunion theme. If it doesn't work, then there may be a guest. But I'm trying to, it'll be fun. I'm, I've got my, my juices, my creative juices flowing. So thank you again, everyone. We love you. We appreciate you. And as always, namaste. Have a great weekend. Nice. And have a fun Super Bowl and be safe. Bye. 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 Bye